What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to Campside of Man. My name is Connor and welcome to part two of your Upper Body Foundations tutorial series. Within this tutorial, you're gonna see three upper body movements. Each one going to be focused on a primary foundational movement pattern for upper body training. Movement number one we have is a chest press. Movement number two we have is a row. And movement number three we have an overhead press. All you need for today, three separate items. Number one, a bench like myself, or you can do the same thing modified on the floor. Number two, two medium weights. I've got some 25s right here. Think about something that you can safely press overhead and keep under control. It's gonna vary for everybody, but choose what works for you. Last but not least, you're gonna need the playlist. I got mine linked into my ears so I can jam with you. If you'd like to, it's an optional playlist, but it's clicked in to the details. If you go into the details section, click on the link, all you have to do is open it up in a different browser. You bring the volume up to about 50% within that browser, then you can jam up on whatever device you're listening in on so you can hear myself and you can hear the playlist. Other than that, get yourself ready to go. We got 15 minutes of work. We're gonna get you in, get you out, get you more comfortable with some of these foundational three movement patterns for the upper body. I got my playlist started. If you're with me, you got about 10 seconds. Grab your items, grab your bench, get ready to get on into things. If I haven't mentioned, my name is Connor and I'm excited to have you. Let's do this thing. You got three, two, one, let's go. Go ahead, take a seat down, grab your weights, place them at the base of your bench upright so you're ready to grab them. First movement I mentioned we have is the chest press. Now you did the push up in part one of the tutorial. If you haven't seen that, I recommend going back there first. Part two, similar concepts. We're activating the pecs, activating the fronts of the shoulders, the anterior delts, and a little bit of the triceps, all with one primary motion. The chest press. Without weights, we're gonna walk through the foundational kind of mock-up of this, if you will. Take both your hands, have them directly above the midline of your chest. With the chest press, we've got two actions. Number one, we've got the lower. We lower by sending the elbows out in a way bringing our palms out, leading over the elbows. From the bottom, we have movement number two of the motion, and that's the press. We press up as if we were trying to suck our elbows together, bringing the dumbbells up to the top. You got about 10 seconds, just think slow out in a way. At all times, your elbows are directly underneath your wrist. We press up, slow down, coming to about midline of the chest, two inches above the top of the chest, or a little bit lower, and press up. You got three seconds, just kind of get that motion down. We grab our weights in two. In one, sit up, grab your weights. If you got heavier weights, here's kind of a trick. You can kick the leg up, kick the leg up, lower it back down. Make sure head and neck are supported. From here, press up. Find that same position where the dumbbells are directly above the shoulders, and the shoulders are just kind of supporting us in this upper position. Now, to initiate the motion, where do we go? Elbows go out and away, slowly lowering, Lower down to about the line of the chest, if not just a touch higher or lower, press back up together. Slow lower, we inhale on the way down, we exhale on the way up. Now picture there's a rubber band attached to both elbows. It crosses the middle of the body. On the way down, we're stretching that out. We have to push the elbows out of the way to actively stretch the rubber band. On the way in, we just suction the elbows in to the top. Now, same as what we did with the push-ups, we want to avoid locking out the elbows, so we come to like 95% instead of 100. Big point here is we never let the dumbbells go over shoulder level. We never let the dumbbells go beyond the elbows. So, elbows tracking underneath the palms at all times, elbows tracking at or below shoulder level, somewhere in that range for safety, all the way through. You got five, you got four, you got three, Two, one. Let's slow down just three repetitions to really get the idea. In three, two, one. Slowly lower with me. Elbows out of the way. Dumbbells directly above the elbows. Palms facing forward. Press back up to the top. One more. Slowly lower here. Again, we're at chest level or a little bit below, a little bit above. Press up. Final one. Slow and controlled. You got three. You got two, you got one. Go ahead and roll it on up. Next movement we have, the row. We stand up tall, dumbbells in hand. First movement we have is the hip hinge. Hip hinge is something we learned in our lower body tutorial. If you need to check that out, you can pause this and hop back to that. But the main idea is I have a soft bend in my knees. I push my hips as far back as I can, allowing my chest to lower. In this position, my hamstrings and my glutes 
take the control or the burden of holding the weight. Let's go through that again. This time, pull your navel and your spine, or you can cough. <coughs> Feel tension in the abdominals, push the hips back. If you find your back arching or rounding, good chance you've either not allowed your chest to lower with the hips going back, or you haven't pushed the hips far enough back, so we end up rounding instead of having that flat line. From this position, can you take the elbows, send them out and away at about 45 degrees? Let's go for a few more of these. Let's say three, two, one. Go ahead, stand up tall. Anytime you have discomfort in the low back, stand up, shake it out. Again, all the way through, soft knees. Push the hips back, allowing the chest to lower. Elbows go out and back, 45 degrees. Every time we row, trying to get the upper arm about parallel with the floor. Not necessarily just to the line of the ribs, but a little bit past. Go ahead and stand up tall. Shake it on out. One more time. We raise, we lower. So this is an unsupported row, meaning we really have to engage the abdominals, otherwise that low back can take the brunt of it. A little tidbit of advice. Can you keep the dumbbells from going far away, but instead keep them close to the shins, close to the torso? You got three, you got two, you got one. You can place one dumbbell down. Now for those of us who may have any discomfort in the low back, I'm going to show you a single-sided, isolated motion, but that's going to be supported by the bench. Dumbbell in my left hand, right knee on the bench, right hand on the bench, I just hang. Now if you find your back arching or dipping, you may want to adjust the position of your hand or your knee. If they're too close, I'll be rounding. If they're too far, I may be arching. So shoulder over the palm, hip over the knee, I row up. Release down as if I'm grazing my rib cage all the way through. Now, once again, no matter what position you're in, even though I'm supported here, I still take my navel, I pull it back to my spine. Flat line, head to tailbone, all through this motion. You have three, two, one. Go ahead and switch over, opposite side. We did it on the left, we bounce it out on the right. Shoulder over the palm, hip over the knee. If you're dipping or arching, you know what to do. Modify that position. Now, if you find that your back knee is getting hit or getting in the way, I recommend going back and out, giving us free range for the arm and more stability from falling side to side. Last piece of advice, don't allow the shoulder to dip or raise. Try to keep the back flat, shoulder to shoulder. You got three, you got two, you got one. Take that dumbbell, place it on the bench. Take a seat down, grab your opposite dumbbell, place it on the bench. We're going into our shoulder press. I'm gonna show you this seated so we can really isolate the position without the lower body wanting to come to the party. If you're with me, one dumbbell, two dumbbell. Breathe, watch, and listen. First 30 seconds, I'm just gonna walk you through it. So, picture, we're making big goal posts. One with the right arm, one with the left arm. If you could see me from the side, you notice the elbows aren't in front or behind the wrist, right above. The second that weight comes behind the elbow, put stress on the rotator cuff, and that's a recipe for disaster. So, no matter what movement you're doing, press, chest press, anything, elbow stays underneath the palm. If you're with me, five seconds away, we just press overhead in three, two, from the goal post position, press up. Now, can you look up and see your dumbbells? If you cannot, they're too far back. Again, risk against the shoulder. If you can look up and you don't have to look far to see them, probably too far forward, you would notice that because they'd start falling forward on you. That's just gravity. So, from here, if I see him up, awesome. Lower down. I said goal post, but notice we go a little bit lower. Goal post would be imagining I'm at 90 degrees. So I go down almost to the level where the dumbbell lobe is touching the shoulder and back up. Now this is a double-sided press. This is a challenge. You can always modify your weight so you can be like, I'm going one. Elbows still out. Imagine I'm doing the goal post, but now with both hands on one. Yeah, five seconds. We're gonna go one arm at a time to really isolate and walk through the motion more. In three, two, one. Take one dumbbell, place it on down. Opposite dumbbell at the shoulder, press up. Now notice there's a little instability, so instead of going straight up, I bring it slightly in to have a center line. Look up, I can see it, awesome. Elbow out and away, bring it down, press up. I can't reiterate enough, elbow always underneath the line of the palm. 
Now notice for this, we're not having the elbow directly under, but it's in the same line. Different than with the chest press. Why? To have it out here is going to start pulling us away, especially because we're doing one side at a time. So we bring it down, we bend it, but it's still in the same plane. You got three, two, bring it on over. Opposite side, press it up, lower it down. Three things to check. We talked about looking overhead. We talked about making sure we look to the left or right to see the elbow in line with the palm. Now what's the third? It's very easy for me to arch my back. You can't see me from the side, but now you can see me from the side. If I'm arching, bat in the low back, so pull the navel in. Keep that flat line, head to tailbone. You got three, two, one. Go ahead and take it. Welcome to the end of our three movements. We did the chest press, we did the row, we did the overhead press. These are three foundations. A lot of things you're gonna see. Now, let's show you some variations. Both dumbbells in hand, lay down the back. We get set up for the chest press, shoulders directly underneath the palms, palms face forward. Before we went elbows out of the way, palms forward all the way through, but now, Let's add a rotation. Let's go ahead, palms face in, palms face forward. Palms face in, palms face forward. So just adding a little bit of rotation here. As we open things up at the bottom, feeling a little bit more on the fronts of our shoulders, a little bit more on the anterior delts. So this is one variation. We can also switch that on its head. Have the palms at the top, say we lower down, palms forward, palms in. Palms forward, palms in. This targets the pecs a little bit more with that rotation. Almost like we're trying to turn our palms underhand, but we don't go all the way. Just palms in. You have three, two, one. Keep the palms facing in. The traditional, we always have palms waving to the front. Now, we go to what we call close grip press. Similar to how we did the close grip push-up, elbows graze your side on the way down, press up. We still keep a distance between both dumbbells, like we've got a little beach ball. We're trying to hold that same position. A little bit more on the triceps, back and upper arms, a little bit more on the fronts of the shoulders. Slow, controlled, press up. Now, what are the elbows doing? They're grazing the sides, but what are they not doing? Locking out at the top. <sighs> you got five, four, hold me, three, two, one. Go ahead and raise it on up. Now, Back into the rows, couple variations. The first one I'm gonna show you is unsupported. Soft bend in the knees. What do we do with the hips? We push them back, but we don't drop them. Chest goes down. Take your palms, face them forward, row up. Imagine between both your dumbbells, you've got a straight line. You wanna bring that straight line directly into the abdomen. Almost as if we're trying to tap the navel with this imaginary line. Now this is an underhanded row. Allows us to focus a little bit more on the lats. Major muscle group of the upper and middle back. Now again, you've got the option. If you have low back discomfort, we pop into that position. Palm faces under, elbow still grazes the side. The difference between this row and the row we had in the beginning is instead of the elbows going out and away at 45 degrees, the elbows stay tight and graze the rib cage. Again, a little bit more of the lats. Here again is just another option. We go one side at a time, we isolate. You got five, four, three, two. Dumbbell on top, dumbbell on top. Last two minutes, last two motions. We did two alternations, oh, I can't speak today. Two alternations of the chest press, two alternations of the row, two alternations of our shoulder press. First one, dumbbells face in. I can tap the two lobes at the front. I open up, I press up, I bring it down and in. What's the variation of this? What does this change? Has me more supported at the bottom. Instead of isolating this position where the, the shoulders are really engaged, it allows me to almost kind of bring it to a recovery point. Disengage the shoulders slightly, bring it back in. Now at some point you may get fatigued and you're like, ah, Connor, I'm starting to arch my back, I'm starting to lose it. That's a good opportunity for you to shake it out, take a break. Or an opportunity for you to stand up Use the lower body just enough to help, almost like a self-spotter. You got three, two, one. Go ahead, stand it on up. I'm gonna do it with a bench behind me, but you don't need a bench behind you. Soft bend in the knees, about 30 degrees. I press up. I'll step behind the bench, give you a little bit more range of motion. A little pop, a little press, a little pop, 
low press. What I'm doing, using my legs to initiate momentum upwards. It's not cheating, it's just saying, I'm gonna add a little bit of help just to initiate. I may be at my fatigue point, and instead of stopping, I'm gonna continue doing a solid motion by adding a little bit of assistance for my lower body. Again, it's like you have a spotter, spotter's just yourself. Now, a lot of different names for this. Some call it a jerk press. This would be a modified jerk press. You just call it a little extra assistance from the lower. I'm still rotating or I can stay wide. I prefer bringing it in. Choose what feels safer for you. You got three, two, and then one. Place the mind down. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your quick 15 minute part two upper body foundational tutorial. Each one of these movements you're gonna see many times throughout many workouts. See if you can lock in the good form. See if you can remember some of the points we taught you today. And see if you can chime in and check out the rest of the tutorial series. My name is Connor. Adios.